Does the charging system on your antique tractor no longer work? Or maybe it's still six volt and when it doesn't start, you have to jump it and it's inconvenient because that six volt and everything else in your shop is 12 volt. Maybe you want brighter headlights, you want your tractor to start quicker. All of those are reasons that someone would choose to do a 12 volt conversion on their antique tractor. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps to do a 12 volt conversion. Now, there's lots of different methods and ways that people will choose to go through their conversion. Probably all of them work and are good. I'm going to show you one way that you can do it. Uh, lots of times people base that decision on how much they want to spend or how much knowledge they have about the electrical system. So you can decide for yourself how you'd like to convert it to 12 volt. If you'd like to follow the process that I'm using, these steps will make that process very easy for you. So let's get started. First, taking the muffler off, I'm going to set it down here. There's the muffler clamp. Then we'll get this breather cap off the top here. Then there's clips on this hood that I already have pulled out on that side. I got this one pulled out. I'm gonna pull out this one. That's that. The hood is loose. So now I'm going to lift it off. There you go. We're going to go ahead and remove the battery here. Now my battery is in a battery box, might not be the case on your tractor, but wherever the battery is, you need to remove it to begin this process so that there's not any accidents. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this out and hopefully I can get the, there we go, get the lid off of it. And then we'll disconnect the cables and remove this completely. My battery cables are removed. Now, when you remove your battery cables, it's really close to the gas tank, and you don't want to have any accidental arcing at all, so be extremely careful. Also, remove your ground cable first, and then your other cable, and uh, you can be safe that way. Even when I lift it out, I'm just going to put this rag over top of those posts, uh, just another step of safety so that there aren't any accidents there when I remove that. So now I'm going to lift this down and the battery will be completely removed. On a farm wall tractor, you have to remove the fan belt before you can remove this belt off of the generator. So in order to remove the fan belt, there is a set screw like this one that is on the pulley here, or near the pulley, and you uh, remove it and it's tapered here. So as you wind it around, it will help you to be able to release the fan. So do that and get your fan belt out if you're working on a farm wall tractor that's set up the same way. Next, we'll get this generator out and we need to remove the generator bolt, uh, belt. So I'm going to remove these uh, wires that are connected here through the wiring harness, like so, and then that will just rest there. And then there's a few bolts that hold in the generator. There's one up here, one down here. There we go. And then this last one will come out. Given it's, it's kind of tight in there. Maybe if I screw it out, it'll come. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to pull the generator out completely. not connected it's just wants to be in there there we go and the belt will slide off there and the generators out perfect my alternator bracket is on the tractor here you can see that it's loose that's so that we can adjust it later this one up here is loose too so that's what we're gonna that's how we're gonna have it while we try to uh, put this alternator on also you can see that I have my belt already moved in here when you uh, purchase the kit with the brackets. You can purchase it either way, but when you purchase the kit, the belt comes with it from Steiner. This is a nice uh, alternator that we're going to put on for our conversion. So that sets in there and we're going to get the, maybe we'll put the belt on here first. Okay. My belt is secure on both ends. It's where it should be. Then this will go into the bracket. I'm going to swing that up and over. Maybe Let's try it this way. Okay, that's gonna work for us. Okay, so my alternator is down here where it should be. 
the belt on. Then we're going to take this bracket up and over, swing it in. There's a notch down here on the alternator which aligns and then that will connect up there. So put this bolt through to hold it. Maybe we'll try the bottom one first. <laughs> there we go. It's aligned good. And let's try this bolt up here again. There it's going. Okay, we'll get that all secured like so. I want to give you a close-up of the alternator after it's completely installed. Here's the groove or the notch that I talked about so that it fits in there very nicely. I've tightened up all of my brackets down here. You can see how this one fits underneath here. This alternator already has the diode built into it so that it won't drain the battery. It's a nice alternator to go on here and you can see how it will perfectly fit underneath the hood without having to cut the hood to make room for the alternator. So this is where the one wire will connect. And now we're gonna move up to the front of the tractor and talk about the gauges and the starter button. Now we're ready to update the dash here. We're gonna change this gauge. We're gonna put in a 60 amp gauge instead of this original one. So there's two wires on the back that hold the wires down, or there's two uh, nuts on the back that hold the wires down, I should say. So we'll get those out and then we'll remove both of these nuts that hold the gauge in. You can see here that I removed the seat. I just did that so you can easily see what's going on. Of course, in your 12 volt conversion, you'll be able to work on this with the seat intact. You won't need to do that. You can feel the gauge getting loose. Pull these off the rest of the way. Next, we'll remove these wires back here. That's that. This will pull off. And there's the gauge out. You can see that I have my new switch in here. On the back, you'll notice that the switch does look different than the original style that we took off of this tractor. That's okay, this is just the updated technology how switches are now. On the front, there was a small notch down here that we had to line up with the switch. Then we put the lock washer on and then this final nut and tightened it really tight. So the next step back here will be to put all the wires onto the switch. But next I wanna to talk to you about the gauge. We're replacing the gauge with a 12 volt or a 60 amp style gauge like this one. So I'm gonna set it in here and you can look at it and get it straight. And then back here, you'll double check again to make sure that it's straight. Here's where your cover slides on there. And then I'll put a washer on each one and then our nut on top. Okay, and then we'll just tighten these all the way up before we put our wires on these same prongs. We are ready to put our new wiring harness onto the tractor. Now, some people will make their own wires when they do a 12 volt conversion, but in my opinion, it's so much easier just buy the wiring harness. Every single one of the wires are labeled so you know exactly where they go. They're fitted to the tractor so that they're the right length. It'll make your job a lot easier. It comes with an instruction sheet when you purchase the wires from Steiner that tells you what each uh, labeled wire is for and where it goes. And uh, if you lose that or want to review that, you can always look up that information online. This wire goes up here on my alternator. This wire goes to some people for a coil. On my tractor, it goes onto the magneto. There's just a little screw that holds it into here and then we'll connect it on the other end. That's that, and I'm just gonna tighten this up, and I'll also tighten the other one up with a wrench too, so that they're really tight. 
If you elect to change your on off button, you want to make sure that you purchase the right one. This one is for a magneto, just so that you can ground the magneto. And then this one with two prongs would be for the distributor. So make sure that you get the right on and off switch and replace it if you'd like. Connecting the wire to the back of my on and off switch here. It's just one wire since our tractor has a magneto. So it just easily screws on. I'm ready to connect both of the wires on the back of my gauge here. So this wire came from the alternator. I'm gonna put a lock washer on it and then the nut. Oops. Good thing I got a second one here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then this wire goes to the hot side of the starter button, which we'll hook up in a little bit. But there it is connected to the gauge. Again, we have a lock washer and our nut. Once I get these on here, I'll tighten them up with a nut driver so that they're very tight. You'll see that I have everything wrapped up in my box here. Also notice that I put my light switch for or the fuse access for the lights right here. There wasn't provision, it was uh, just couldn't get it to work into any of these existing holes. So I did drill a hole into the original cover there to make room for that so that you can easily change out the fuse when needed with the lights. Then we uh, put the screws back together and this portion is all complete. Now we're ready to move on. Okay. When this tractor had a generator on it, it had positive as ground. However, when you change your tractor to be 12 volt, now negative is ground. It's really important that you understand that and you don't put it back the wrong way because then you'll do damage to the system that you just put on the tractor. So understand that when your tractor is 12 volt, negative is ground. So therefore, when we go to hook up the battery, we want to hook up positive first and then we'll uh, hook up negative, which is ground. So we'll do that and I'm gonna tighten it up. Then we'll start the tractor and test out the conversion. Whoops. One of the final steps in the 12 volt conversion is to change your light bulbs from six volt to 12 volt. So you'll do this on both of your headlights and your rear lights. On a farm all tractor, there's a ring held on by a screw at the bottom and you can pull the ring and the lens off like so. It is that way on many other types of antique tractors as well. There's our old light bulb. Here's a new 12 volt light bulb that goes in like that. And then we'll just replace this right back on there. Depending on the type of tractor that you're working on, it may have a distributor instead of the magneto, like the one that I'm using. So if you are doing a 12 volt conversion on a tractor that has a distributor, it will also have a coil. Your coil will need to be changed to be a 12 volt coil instead of six volt, as well as you'll need to get a new resistor like this one. That's really essential for most coils. Uh, some coils that you purchase come with a resistor already built in, but that's not always the case. So you definitely want to make sure that you do have a resistor to protect your coil. At this point, we want to double check our battery and make sure that it's charging. You can see that right now it's displaying 12.6 volts just resting. We're going to start the tractor and see what it changes to. This is a way you can double check. Very good. You can see it's jumping here, it's at 14.5. Very good, you can turn it off. This is just another way to test up your battery. When it was running, it jumped up to 14.5, which is really good. Now I'm going to uh, disconnect this and I'll put the battery box here back together. I am going to put a little piece of insulator here to uh, protect this so it doesn't arc or touch the metal box at all. Then we'll put the lid on and tuck this back in there. We'll start the tractor up, watch the gauge closely. There you can see that it's positive, it's charging. Very good. Okay, you can see that our gauge there is functioning properly. If yours goes the opposite way towards discharge and you feel that your tractor is charging, you say, I did everything right, then you probably just got the two wires turned around. So you can go back and change that if it's not working properly. 
Notice how neatly the alternator fits underneath the hood. There was no reason to cut the hood or anything. From here, you can't tell that there's the alternator underneath there instead of a generator. This is a very clean way to convert your tractor to 12 volt. I hope that this video will be helpful to you when you convert your tractor to 12 volt.